Okay, this is why I experiment with uh, PowerPoint and Zoom, uh, looking at the combination of those two things. And I'm going to now try to call up my PowerPoint presentation. Um, ah, there it is. Now, what I do I want to do on this page is then to use the annotation tool to highlight some aspects on the page. And I will do it in this case. I'm just going to use the draw tool, draw a little block around this part of the text. And if I want to, I want to, yes, I'm going to draw part on this one. Now the first problem with your PowerPoint presentation in Zoom is I, before I move to the next page, I need to erase this annotation that I did here. The reason is if I leave it there, it displays on the next page. And I also have to close the annotations tool and then double click on the PowerPoint and we get to the next uh, screen on my PowerPoint. What I wanted to do here is to ask the people, the participants, give me more examples of uh, events that can be regarded as synchronous. Um, I used the annotation to the text one and I then add what I tell me. But once again, before I can move to the next screen, I need to erase this one. And there I do that. Close the annotations and we move to the next screen. This is just examples of streaming tools that can be used. This one, sorry, I went to do the previous one. This one gives you an example of conference tools. And this is the main issue that I want to deal with. Is if we're going to use synchronous learning, for what are we going to use it? What is the problem that we want to look at? And here I list some benefits of synchronous learning, which you can go through on your own time, because I want to get to this thing here. This is where I think Zoom can work very well. This is a diagram that I give to the students in the class, in this case on, on, the, on Zoom, and I ask them, or one of them, to volunteer to show me what happens in this diagram if there's a decrease in supply, and how will that impact on the total revenue of a firm? What I then do is, I, I, while the student works on it, I can interfere or intervene, or I can wait in the end and then give my comments. And this is where I and Billy then experimented with this, and we came up with the following. And if I click on this, you can look through the whole video clip now. Um, you can just place um, part of it. I'm going to show you the, the important parts. There it is. So this is the way the student actually is now working on the diagram and explaining to me what uh, what is happening. And there's some more stuff going on. Yeah. So this I think works very well, and I really think. It has great applications for uh, distance education. That, that is now all for now.